competition Only he ran my prescription Dr. Buzz He ain't got no busy line You can call him anytime Dr. Buzz Dr. Buzz Dr. Buzz Dr. Buzz Don't need no apple every day Never wanna keep him away Dr. Buzz All his bugs still think it's cool Though he's still in grad school Dr. Bugs here, your friendly neighborhood entomologist, and today, well, I've got with me the Atlas Moth. Genus Atticus, species Atlas. Also periodically referred to as the snake's head moth because of the markings on the wings resembling a cobra's head in profile. The name Atlas Moth either makes reference to the expansive surface area of their wings and the map-like markings on them, or is a comparison to the gargantuan titan Atlas of Greek mythology who is tasked with holding up the entire Earth. And speaking of the Earth, the atlas moth is endemic to this area of it. It's particularly common in Southeast Asia, though they're also typically found in China, India, and New Guinea as well. Shoo, you're blocking the Malay archipelago. Surprisingly, no one is really sure if the name atlas refers to the titan or the map, but either way, it's pretty clear that their scientific name makes reference to their remarkable size. As it should, these things are huge. With such care put into giving them their scientific name, you can bet I put a similar amount of thought into what I would name my pet moths. Nerd! With a nearly one foot wingspan and a staggering wing surface area, they're considered by many researchers to be the largest flying insect on the planet, with their only competition being Casanacera hercules, the Hercules moth of New Guinea. When these insects are in flight, they look like birds. This humble insect was even the inspiration for the classic Godzilla movie villain, Mothra. I don't see it. I don't see it. It may surprise you to find out that, with all of that bodily real estate dedicated to their wings, these insects fly very, very little. It's actually because of something that they're missing on their faces. Let's take a closer look and freeze. What's missing on this face? We've got eyes, pretty big ones I might add, antenna of the poofy variety, but no mouth. These insects have a curious inability to eat. One good reason for such an odd life cycle is that it boosts the odds of success through specialization. Caterpillars have a particularly refined life cycle. They're basically a stomach with legs. Their sole purpose in life is to eat, so it's all they're structured to do. They walk, they eat, grow, and store fat. It's a simple life, but a good life. But when they become adults, they leave childish things behind. And apparently that includes eating. Instead of having a big clunky digestive system taking up much needed internal space, they instead fill that space with reproductive tissue. The females are basically just wings and humongous ovaries. This way, at each stage of their life cycle, they can focus biologically and behaviorally on being perfect at just one task. It also allows for adults not to compete with their offspring for food. Just a word of caution should you choose to engage in this alternative life cycle. Every move you make contributes to the depletion of a resource you can't replenish, so it's good to be frugal with your energy expenditures. The only time you'll really see them take off is when they go in search of a mate. And even then, they'd rather not waste their efforts flitting about in hopes of maybe finding that special someone. Nope, efficiency is still the name of the game. Instead, they use pheromones. Think of it sort of like online dating. Oh yeah, sweet thing. You dealt it, and I smelt it, baby. Just wait till I wrap my segmented tarsi around you. Oh yeah. Okay, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not what I meant, that, that's just weird. Pheromone, from the Greek pharaoh to bear, and hormone meaning stimulus or force. Pheromones literally carry a behavioral stimulus to the receiver. In other words, you smell it and it makes you want to do stuff. Pheromones facilitate meetups between moths, sort of the same way that online dating does nowadays for people. Okay, so here's how it works. The female releases a scent from this gland near her anus to allow males to know that she's interested. So the males, as soon as they smell it, come in search of... Uh... Yeah, okay, I think I, I, I see why the online dating analogy 
did not work well in rubric. Uh, yeah, I'd like to retract my earlier literary device. That was a bad analogy. Some male moths have been shown to be able to detect the pheromones of a female up to seven miles away from where she released it. That is an incredible feat, and one that they owe primarily to these. Those fluffy antennae aren't just there for decoration. Form always fits function. They're plumos for a reason. Pluma, from the Latin for feather, and os, a Greek ending that denotes possessing the qualities of. Instead of having antennae that are straight up and down like some insects, these projections increase the surface area, allowing them to smell more efficiently. In other words, He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die! He's so fluffy! Throughout this video, you've probably been thinking, that looks like a delicious insect. You know, you're probably not the only one thinking that. A lot of stuff likes to eat these guys. A few mammals and some generalist birds go for these insects, but they're primarily under attack from within their own class. At least 13 different genera of insects seek out the atlas moth specifically as a source of food, 10 of which are wasps, the most abundant of which attack the pupil stage. There are even two species of mosquito that have been observed sucking the hemolymph, or insect blood, from their wings. But the wasps still definitely form public enemy number one. Female wasps search out the immobile cocoons and sting them, simultaneously laying an egg inside. The baby wasp hollows out the insides of the pupa, and in a few months, instead of a moth emerging, you get a wasp. Or a thousand. That happens too. But I guess that's the problem with being both delicious and defenseless. You know what they say. You know it's hard out here for a pupa. <laughs> what? Most of my audience probably isn't going to get that reference. Wasps aren't the only ones interested in these cocoons. Apparently, in Southeast Asia, the empty cocoons are collected hanging from trees. They cut down the side, attach a zipper, and make it into a purse. Wait, a purse? I mean, obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of purses, but could this really? I mean, coin purse, maybe? You could put quarters? I could, I could take this to the arcade? I, Help me out, ladies. Comment section. Could this be your purse? Purses? P purses? Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And if you'd like to download the Dr. Bucks theme song or any of my other music, you can find it in the SoundCloud link in the corner. Is that, so is that like a light up or it? Oh, okay. All right. It's pretty cool. I'm down with that. Now, I would hope you left this experience with a newfound respect for insects. But if not, give me another chance. Watch my next video. I'll have you sing along in no time. Hey, that's love right there. Yeah.